Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Pourable Pizza. That's right, for centuries, chefs have been trying to figure out how to do a pizza dough in liquid form. And while thousands have tried, it's never been successfully done. That is, until today. Well, actually, technically a couple days ago. But the point is, I think I figured it out. So let me go ahead and show you this before I change my mind and trademark it and keep it to myself, which is probably what I should do, but I bet that's a lot of paperwork. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started by mixing up this game-changing dough. And by dough, I actually mean batter. So into a mixing bowl, I'm going to add some flour. And I'm actually using a special kind of flour called Double Zero, which tends to work very nicely for pizza. And of course, I'll give you a little more info about that on the blog post. But I'm pretty sure this will work almost as well with all purpose. And then to our flour, we'll add one package of dry active yeast. And this time, we're not going to start it in warm water like we usually do, since this mixture is going to be so wet. Plus, every once in a while, I get an email saying you don't have to start modern yeast in water anymore. Come on, Chef John, that's so 20th century. Which I guess is true, but I'm a creature of habit. But anyway, for this, we can go ahead and dump it right in. And then we can continue on with our classic pizza dough ingredients, which of course would include some salt, as well as a little touch of honey or sugar, although I do prefer the honey. I like to give the local bees a little business. We will also add in a little bit of olive oil. And then we'll finish this up by pouring in our warm water. Ideally, I like this to be about 105 degrees. So we will dump that in. And then, of course, we're going to have to mix this up. So by force of habit, I grabbed my dough hook, and I headed over to the stand mixer, and I started mixing this up with my dough hook attachment. And it didn't really dawn on me until this video was done, but this mixture really was way too thin for the dough hook. I mean, what am I doing here? It's not really mixing in. So in hindsight, obviously the whisk attachment would have worked much better here. But anyway, with the help of a spatula and a few scrape downs, this eventually came together. And once it did, I let it mix for about five or six minutes, at which point it looked like this. Very, very thin. So I took my spatula and cleaned that up a little. And then like all pizza doughs, pourable or otherwise, we're gonna need to let this rise, so to speak. So I covered that with a plate and just left it right on the counter for an hour and a half. And if everything's gone according to plan, you should be looking at one beautifully bubbly batter. So let me go ahead and grab a ladle so you can get a better look at what we got here. And as much fun as this stuff is to look at, it's even more fun to stir with a ladle. So what we'll do is we'll give that a good stir to knock all the bubbles out. Sort of the same idea as if we were working with traditional pizza dough. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and pre-cook our crust, which I'm gonna do in this cast iron pan, which we need to generously grease first with olive oil. And then once our pan has been generously oiled, we can go ahead and pour in our batter. And I really wanted to use a large squeeze bottle for this, but I didn't have one on hand. So all I did was put it in a plastic bag and cut off the corner. And because I'm going for a thin crust here, I found this to be the best method for putting in the batter. I did a few experiments with ladling it and kind of pushing it around or using a spatula to spread it, but it didn't work as well because you're mixing the batter into the oil in the pan, which I don't want to happen. We want our pourable pizza dough on top of the oil. So this is the method I'm recommending. Although as you can see, I did trap a little bit of the oil and I was thinking of fixing that with extra batter, but then I remembered I was making a thin crust and we don't want extra batter. So I grabbed a parry knife and use the old poke and swirl. And that is it, we've successfully transferred a very thin layer of our pourable pizza dough into this generously oiled pan. And at this point we can head to the stove where we're gonna cook this over medium high heat. So we'll set that down and we'll just wait. And what we're waiting for is bubbles, lots of bubbles, which will start to form slowly. But before you know it, it's gonna look like this. And when I first tested this, I was thinking, man, this is gonna be much more like a pizza crumpet. So this does look a little strange, but do not be deterred. And all we wanna do here is wait for those bubbles to form and for this thing to kinda of dry out enough where it's safe to flip, which for me was right about here. So I gave that a flip and I went ahead and I cooked that bubble side for a minute or two before flipping it back over because we really wanna concentrate most of this pre-cooking on the crust side. We need somehow to get a nice crispy crust underneath this Otherwise, what we're gonna be eating is nothing more than a pizza pancake. And do you wanna eat a pizza pancake? No, of course you don't. Nobody does. So we really do wanna push that smooth, non-bubbly side as far as we can go. I mean, don't burn it, but we do need to get that a little crispy. So anyway, I kept cooking my crust on medium high, flipping it back and forth until it looked like this. The bubbly side was kinda of dry to the touch and golden in color. And the bottom looked like, well, a pizza crust. Now, please keep in mind, this is gonna go back in the oven with the toppings for a few minutes. So that will actually get a little darker, so please keep that in mind. 
And then once your portable pizza crust has been pre-cooked, we can go ahead and finish that with our favorite toppings. So I went ahead and spread over some pizza sauce. And not only do all those little holes look cool, they're also pretty awesome holding your sauce. So I spread over my pizza sauce and then top that with some fresh mozzarella, which by the way was way too fresh, which is why I'm crumbling it on. This stuff's more for eating than for pizza, but that's what I had, so I used it. I also decided to add some freshly grated Parmigiano Reggiano, the real stuff. What it lacks in cellulose, it more than makes up for in flavor. And then I finished that off with some hipster farm to table artisan pepperoni, which is exactly the same as a regular pepperoni, except cost twice as much. And of course, as with all pizzas, the toppings are up to you. You are the boss of this pizza dough that pours like a sauce. But no matter what you use, don't put on too much. That's the fatal flaw with most bad pizzas. And then once we're happy with our toppings, we can go ahead and finish this in the oven. But don't forget, this is already cooked, except for the toppings. So what I like to do is just put this under the broiler for about three or four minutes. Or if you prefer, you can just do it in a 500 degree oven until everything is heated through and your toppings are cooked. And this is what mine looked like after about four minutes under the broiler. Check it out. Man, that looks good. But looks can be deceiving, so let's eat it to make sure. So I transferred that to a cutting board to slice it up. And unfortunately, my pizza wheel is broken. So I had to use the old mezzaluna. And please excuse the hairy forearm shot. That is never a good look. But anyway, I cut that up. And I don't know about you, but to me, that looks exactly like a thin crust pepperoni pizza. And above and beyond appearances, when you bite into this thing, I really think you're going to be impressed. I mean, of course, it's not going to be exactly the same. How could it be? But the final product was very, very good and extremely, extremely pizza-like. And please keep in mind, I've only done this once. So I'm sure with your help, we can continue to advance this technique. But anyway, that's it. Pourable pizza dough. I'm thinking this stuff would be a huge hit with the kids on the next pizza night. Or simply the next time you want pizza, but you don't want to mess around with a traditional pizza procedure and everything that entails. I mean, I enjoy stretching and spinning and especially rolling as much as the next guy. But I also really love this alternative technique. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.